Hello, I'm Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video showing how to make an immediate temporary crown out of a newly placed implant. Okay. So we use a comb beam scanner to take a scan of the patient, and then we check to make sure by using a dummy implant to see if the patient can have enough room for the noble active implant. And looking here, we can see that there's enough buccal bone, enough lingual bone, so we're able to see that the angulation of the implant could be quite acceptable. The next step we do is we place in the surgical guide, which allows us to provide the angulation. And using the comb beam technology to visualize how the bone is, we use a precision drill to come in contact with the ridge. It allows us to kind of feel the ridge and feel exactly what we're seeing on the comb beam scanner. The precision drill is quite good because it allows us to pinpoint exactly where we want to access the ridge. And so by feeling around and getting uh, it exactly where we want, it uh, makes the drilling process much easier. So next we're going to follow that with a 2 millimeter twist drill, which will follow the position of the precision drill. And this keeps us on target because it's all about angulation when you're placing these lower anterior implants. So we place a direction guide so we can take an x-ray and check and see that we're on target before we go to full length. Once we get the x-ray back, we're able to verify the angulation from a mesial distal aspect to make sure we're not hitting into any roots. And this looks quite good here. Then in this case, we placed a 3.5 flapless guide for shaping the papilla. And I used the scalpel to kind of run around this uh, guide. And this allows us to kind of elevate a little flap for creating a new papilla later on in the procedure. I typically use a molt elevator to elevate the papilla off the ridge because we are creating new papilla here. And we're being very conservative to maintain the, the blood supply because the blood supply, 30% of it comes from the porosity in these cases. So we use a two millimeter twist drill to take it to the length. And then we're gonna come back and start in with the pilot drill. And I like the pilot drill because it follows the twist drill exactly. The pilot drill has a smooth tip on it, so it follows the channel that the 2 millimeter twist drill initially made in the ridge. So as this goes in, it takes you in about 8 millimeters. Then we come back with the 2.4 to 2.8. Now this drill will follow quite specifically down that canal. Now it's time to get the implant ready. We're going to use a Noble Active narrow platform 3.5 millimeter implant. I'm going to place this because of the great stability it's going to offer to us. Now the implant has some bone preserving properties as well. It's got a platform shift on top of 0.25 millimeters with a conical seal and an internal hex. Now as we go to the mouth, we carry it with a uh, surgical driver and this allows us to place this in a very accurate position. But by taking this uh, surgical driver, we're able to carry the implant and really have a real tactile feel. You have to be somewhat careful not to exert too much force, but uh, actually the, the driver works very, very well. So once we have the implant at the proper level, we know that we can come back and have enough crown height space and also uh, be sure that this is going to have enough torque. Now the next thing is to check the torque of the implant. Because prior to placing an immediate temporary button, we need to have at least 35 newtons. So here we're measuring 70 newtons of torque, which is quite typical, and this is actually recommended by the manufacturer to go up to this torque. The easiest way to carry the immediate temporary abutment to the mouth and to insert it into the implant is to use the Unigrip driver and separate that off the torque wrench. So in the prosthetic kit, separate it off and carry it in and screw it in. And if you do this, you're able to get this immediate temporary abutment in place and then ready to be torqued. Now you do use the prosthetic kit to do this. So the prosthetic kit, what you're going to use is the multi-unit driver. And the multi-unit driver can be placed down on top of the hex of the immediate temporary abutment, allowing you to torque this down to between 15 and 35. So you don't want to go above 35. But I've been usually using about 15 to 20 newtons to tighten these down. Now as we look at the implant, we can see that the abutment is actually very parallel with the two adjacent teeth. This is important for cement retained restorations uh, on the temporary abutments because we have to be able to slide it on and off and be parallel. So we put, take the white cap that's supplied with the immediate temporary abutment 
we place this on top of the abutment itself and this allows us to position this so that the flat surface is in the front. We need this in the anterior so that we can kind of uh, position this to be able to be picked up when we're making the temporary crown. So it gives us a reference point. So we take a little diamond, we're using a 8850KR diamond to kind of shape the mesial and distal aspect to give us a little bit more room for the resin because this is a very tight area for putting on immediate abutments and immediate crowns. We use a temporary crown form to make the shape of the uh, temporary crown. You could use uh, other things like matrices and things, but what we want to do is have something that we can put in some restorative resin. So we place the, res the restorative resin inside the shell and come back and place it on top of the abutment with the white cap underneath. And this allows us to pick up that white cap in the shell. So we like cure this and, and try to make this as uneventful for the patient as possible. Once the plastic crown form has been pulled off the outside of the uh, new crown, then you start to add some flowable to the edge to create some emergence profile for finishing off the area that's going to be uh, subgingival. And this can sometimes be a, quite a bit of uh, flowable resin in this area. So you like cure this and get this ready and then start to shape it with uh, a diamond. I'm using an 8850KR Brazzler diamond red stripe just to kind of shape the area, make sure then you can go back and smooth it and you want to kind of smooth it with some uh, sanding disc and get it so it's going to be fairly close. Then I'll adjust the occlusion a bit. We want to have this into a non-functional loading situation, so no protrusive, no lateral working, non-working interferences at all. So it's basically just to kind of look good and help to shape the gingiva. I like to use a replica and then attach a second temporary abutment to make a handle for using to shape the resin and for doing some custom shading. So it's a great way to hold it because it's a very small little unit. I like to apply some stain on some of these cases. So here we're using some tetric color from Ivoclar Vivident. And we're able to paint this on and then light cure it. And this enables the tooth to look really nice for the healing process. And so it doesn't stand out because patients want this to actually look good and function well. And uh, so it's a great uh, technique. And I'll also sometimes apply some just clear bond on top of this just to make it look a little shiny as well. Now here's for the most important tip of today's uh, YouTube lecture. Use only a very, very small amount of tempon when you cement this on. We don't want any expressing underneath the new kind of fresh surgical area. So what you want to do is take an explorer and apply it inside of the temporary crown and then place it on and make sure that there's none expressing into the, the sulcus area. So now we're going to get into the suturing techniques. And using a, a kind of a suture technique here to create the papilla. So we're going to come through the lingual to kind of have a stabilizing area and then we're going to take the suture uh, down low. So we're using gut here. I usually like to use vicral sutures, but this patient comes from about two to three hours away from my practice. So what we're doing here is we're coming low on the papilla, and we don't want to go over the top of the papilla. We want to go kind of underneath and through the papilla so we can lift that papilla up. And that by lifting that up, it's going to help to create the new architecture that's going to be shaped around the temporary crown. So this allows for a very, very beautiful type of papilla to to bring back and it's hard to recreate papillas so this is a great technique. The first time you make one of these immediate temporary crowns it's going to take you a little time so give yourself some extra time but quite typically I'm taking about 10 minutes to make an immediate temporary crown and I just have to make sure that you understand that you need to have at least 35 newton centimeters before you try to attempt this. And if you have that the results are usually excellent and the literature backs this up so you can you know do this very effectively. So now for the results, and you can see that the temporary looks quite nice, it's quite uh, aesthetic and it's going to help those people to regenerate. So to recap, we place on the immediate temporary abutment, screw that down to 15 to 35 newtons. Then we place on the white cap and pick it up in a little clear stent for a crown fabrication using only a very little amount of cement. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is the Implant Dentistry YouTube video.